Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is the Orbital Observer, and I provide weekly updates on what has been happening in the space industry here on Earth, in orbit, or in deep space. Let's get straight into it. This is weekly orbit number one, and we're gonna kick things off at the California Science Center. All you space shuttle lovers will be happy to know that the space shuttle endeavor has been lifted successfully and is now pointing to the stars once again at the Samuel Ocean Air and Space Center. I hope I got that pronunciation right. And this was the first time that a space shuttle was lifted up successfully outside of a NASA or Air Force facility. In a project known as go for stack the rocket aft skirts were installed on site on the 20th of July of 2023 and progressively more and more parts were added with the final piece de resistance, the shuttle itself, finally being stacked on the 31st of January of this year. I for one hope that I can really see this space shuttle in person one day. For all of you people living close by, you are very lucky. Seeing the space shuttle standing again as if it were ready for launch is just a really emotional moment for all of us who love space and remember fondly the space shuttle era. It has been a busy week for SpaceX. On the 30th of January, on its 10th launch for 2024, SpaceX successfully launched the Cygnus NG-20 to the ISS. The Cygnus NG-20 is Northrop Grumman's uh, uh, resupply vehicle to the ISS, and in this collaboration between Northrop Grumman and SpaceX, we were spoiled with some incredible views of the return to launch site landing. A cool thing about this mission is the fairing on the NG-20. Uh, it has a 5 foot by 4 foot door and according to this tweet by SpaceX it is meant to accommodate integration of late payloads with the assistance of a mobile clean room. I'm not sure if this has been done before but this is definitely the first time I've seen anything like this. It's cool the flexibility that is afforded by this um, custom fairing we can say. And in usual SpaceX fashion these fairing halves were also recovered for later reuse. And just the previous day, there were two Falcon 9 launches only four hours apart. Each one of them launched Starlink satellites, one launched 22 satellites, and the other one 23. This brings the total to well over 5,200 Starlink satellites in orbit. Over in Iran, on the 28th of January, they successfully launched three satellites named the Madha, Kayan 2, and Hatev 1. And this was launched on a Simorg rocket. The Madha is a research satellite with the other two satellites being described as nano satellites with one focused on global positioning and communication respectively. Previous to this uh, successful launch, uh, the Simorg rocket has had five failures up to now. And fortunately for them, this sixth launch proved to be the one where they successfully managed to get satellites into orbit. And a bit of interesting news from Spain. A company called PLD Space has received a grant, or rather a loan, from the Spanish government equal to 40.5 million euros to further develop their Miura rocket. Back in October of 2023, they successfully launched a suborbital version of their Miura rocket. I really hope they succeed, and if they do start space activities, successful commercial space activities, then they're gonna have to pay back that loan, which won't be a bad thing. But there is some stiff competition in the small sat launcher industry, so I wish them all the best, and I'm looking forward to see what this little rocket can achieve. It's quite a cool little rocket. Uh, it's 12.5 meters in length and weighing just over 2,600 kilograms on liftoff, and it has a takeoff thrust of 30 kilonewtons. Now, going to the other scale of satellites and rockets, we have Starlab. Starlab is a private space station being developed by Airbus and Voyager. Now, this private space station is slated to fly on SpaceX's Starship. Starlab has secured a launch with SpaceX Starship for 2028, if everything goes well. And the reason why this is such a remarkable uh, launch order is because of the size of Starlab. 
It has a diameter of approximately 8 meters or about 24 feet, nearly double the diameter of the existing space station. They plan to launch this whole space station in just one go. With the massive diameter as it is, Starship is one of the few vehicles that could accommodate this mammoth station. But why would they want to launch everything all at once? Voyager chairman and CEO Dylan Taylor said that it is so you don't have to perform risky on-orbit assembly of the space station. Launching it all at once is one way to de-risk this project. Starlab is just one of the several private space stations being developed by several companies to uh, account for the retirement of the ISS in 2013. I for one am super excited to see Starship starting to launch some actual payloads and customer payloads. Um, you, can, you can be sure they're going to start off with some Starlink satellites first. But as soon as they get some experience, they're definitely going to start flinging some customer satellites into orbit. Well, fleeing may be a bit of an uh, inappropriate term, but putting satellites, customer satellites, into precise orbits. There we go. Well, thank you so much for joining this weekly orbit. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back next week with some more space news updates and any little interesting tidbits from the space industry. And just before we go, here is the cool space picture of the week. These pictures can be anything about space, rockets, satellites, Earth, the sun, planet, stars, you name it. If it's cool, it can be featured here. And on that note, I bid you farewell, and until next time, keep looking up.